so yeah uh, hi everybody it's uh, phil here so this is the second part um so this is just a continuation of our discussion on uh, x25 and uh, frame really so if you have not watched the previous video about x25 uh, i would advise you to go and uh, check it out because you will be able to see the congruency uh, between x25 and uh, frame really so you can be able to add up the pieces and get a, a, at least um, a, 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 an understanding about what's happening here so i was thinking that uh, for me to tell you the history of frame really it was uh, important for me to just explain to you what where even frame really is coming from so when we talk about frame really what we are actually talking about is packet switching and uh, in packet switching we are talking about the process of forwarding packets from the source to the destination so and uh, there are three types of um, of switching we have the circuit switching message switching and the packet switching but we are going to focus on only uh, packet switching and uh, circuit switching because uh, message switching is not used that much because that's like voice message so in the circuit switching we are talking about a dial-up connection which is um, more like the landline f uh, phones that we have whereby um, when they are installing the landline into your home or office like back in the days your ISP or internet service provider comes to your home and uh, and uh, sets up the line for you which is dedicated to your house so meaning that you have guaranteed bandwidth either you use the phone or not so and in the in the end this was becoming so costly as we will see in uh, in the packet switching network so when we go here in packet switching the principle behind here it's sharing and this is what we are using today we just share information and the reason is you see here like maybe here we in packet switching we deal with grouped data and this may be voice images or or video so let's say you're watching the same video uh, that I'm watching in packet switching because it's sharing uh, what happens is if there's a lot of pressure on the network uh then the network may slow down or uh, it may um we may have packet loss we may we may experience a loss of packets and these are the examples uh of a uh, packet switching and these are the examples of a uh, circuit switching and we have two approaches which is the data approach and uh, virtual circuit approach in the data datagram approach we see that uh, you know here packets do not follow a, a particular sequence you know they are all over the place from source to as long as they travel from source to the de destination they can travel in any kind of format as long as they get to the destination but in virtual circuit approach we see that packets follow a systematic route you know to ensure that they deliver packets to the destination and these are the uh, examples that we have x25 and the frame really and then if we look at the history of a uh, frame really we you have to understand that this is a a one a wide area network and uh, it came on scene because of the inadequacies of uh, x25 so guys if you didn't look at our video on x25 please first go back you will really really get a good understanding of where all this is coming from and this is also designed by itu which was initially called the ccitt and we're going to see that this frame really works hand in hand with other technologies like the atm which we will discuss um or you will do some research about and uh, where this frame really you're gonna be also seeing complementary technologies like 
ATM so and then this frame really is robust uh, it's good for global connectivity and it's also comprehensive so that's very very important for you to note there uh, so we we talk about frame really there's a lot of stuff that is these five issues are going to come in place we have the LMI which is the local management interface which helps us to set up um, a line um, a signal between DTE and DCE so the LMI is going to set up a signal between between the DTE and these are DCE right it sets up it sets up that signal connection so if that, that signal does not exist then uh, we cannot we cannot have any connection so if you look at the and then here we have the PVC which is the permanent virtual circuit so if you look here uh, it's the path it, let's say I want to communicate I want to communicate between router 1 and router 3 what the internet service provider does it creates a path between these right and that path is, is what is called the permanent virtual circuit and then when you go here you're going to to see the DLCL which is the data link connection identifier and guys this is like a flag you know it's the the main the major word here is identifier so when you go here let's say I want to travel from router 1 to router three if the PV the 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 PVC or um, once you know if the PVC develops a path which the ISP uses to develop that path before it does that they must be identifiers identifiers may be like flags you know like you set up something that identifies that path so that you're able to set up the the PVC and then guys when we come back here to the CIR which is the uh, committed information rate we are talking about a guaranteed bandwidth uh, for example on my phone like my phone I have internet uh, for the whole month I have to use is 10 GB so 10 GB is going to be my CIR which is the committed information rate so that is the guaranteed bandwidth my ISP or uh, internet service provider is able to give me so anything after 10 GB is not guaranteed yeah so so then we have the uh, access rate so access rate is basically the speed at which the uh, at which the communication is going to happen between the DTE and the DCE right so so guys we have two types of encapsulation that happen in uh, in uh, this uh, frame really so we have Cisco and the IETF so the Cisco encapsulation only encapsules Cisco products and the IETF or Internet Engineering Task Force does anything does other products that are not Cisco based so this is Cisco is for Cisco products Internet Engineering Task Force is for any other product that is not for Cisco so what are the advantages of a frame really it's more efficient it is more simplified architecture as we talked before it meets the demand of the public never forgets that and the costs are reduced because it's not like circuit it's not like what we saw in circuit switching where you need a, um, a dedicated bandwidth you know it's like when we, you need a file uh, to use it if it's a video or if it's available you're gonna share it if somebody needs to use it they are going to uh, it's going to be available if somebody else needs to use it so you do not need a dedicated line or a dedicated bandwidth 
uh, for that particular video. So with that principle makes a uh, frame really uh, the most you know most available and most reliable uh, one technology wireless or oh, sorry wide area network you know that can give us best results and the disadvantages here like it can be slow because many people may be sharing the same files and we cannot guarantee the quality of service because many people may be streaming or using the same file at that same time so we cannot really guarantee that you're going to do what you want to you you cannot guarantee the quality of service um, so what is here is that it's difficult to configure and um, there's no mechanism for transmitting damage frames so guys you know there ends uh, a presentation so i hope you got a feel of x25 and frame really so that as you go on to do your research you can get more knowledge and uh, you will get a good understanding of both these two uh, so uh, i will say bye for now and um, subscribe for more information and uh, take care of yourself and your family and uh, bye for now